you very much again, Jim McKay. And now let's get to the fight itself, to the one that has caused national controversy and national headlines throughout the past week. Let's go to the Central Maine Youth Center and fight announcer Johnny Addy. And the referee, ladies and gentlemen, the former heavyweight champion of the world, Jay-Z Joe Walcott. Gentlemen, Intercontinental Promotions Incorporated, Robert A. Nylon, President, and Arena AA present the main event, 15 rounds, for the heavyweight championship of the world. The principals, introducing from Denver, Colorado, he's wearing black trunks, he weighs Two fifteen and a quarter, the former heavyweight champion, and now the challenger, Sonny Liston. Liston. His opponent from Louisville, Kentucky. He's wearing white trunks. He weighs two oh six. The heavyweight champion of the world, Muhammad Ali. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, J.C. Joe Walcott will now give the instruction. Well, gentlemen, this is a match you both worked very hard for, and I know you're both in good condition. I'm not going to go with a lot of preliminaries. I know you both know the rules of Maine. So I'm in here to enforce them. So I'll say to you, keep your punches up, protect yourself all the time. Good luck. Shake hands, come out fighting. All right, we're just about ready to go. Muhammad Ali sang a prayer in his corner before coming out to meet the challenger. And did you notice the way Liston was sweating under those hot lights? Fifteen seconds from the bell, our ABC clock timing the fight will be superimposed at the bottom of your screens. Here we go. Tactics the same as in the first fight, established almost immediately. Clay moving consistently to the left, virtually in a circle. Liston relying upon the left jab. officially proclaimed by the Maine Boxing Commission as the end of the fight. Good right by Clay. Did you see the punch? Did you see it? By the ABC clock, one minute, 53 seconds, was 10 seconds after Liston hit the canvas. Walcott never heard the official knockdown timekeeper. Liston never heard a count. Walcott leaves the fighters. Liston still has reflexes. Look at him duck. Now Walcott has gotten information that Liston was down for a count of 10 and more. And so the fight is over and Muhammad Ali is still the champion in a scene of bedlam, chaos, 
and confusion. confused is Jersey Joe Walton. The list in frustration. The bandages come off. There is the confused one. Champion adulation, interviews. bandages now. And the champion tells the press exactly how he feels about at least some of them. But you can hear the crowd chanting in the background, many young Bates College students among them. Now here he's going to talk with the other television commentator, Steve Ellis. Okay. All right, Cassius. Wait a minute, Muhammad Ali. Wait a minute now. Muhammad Ali, better known as Cassius Clay. Muhammad, what was the punch that won it for you? You're a real champion at this point. Well, uh, the punch won the fight for me. Uh, well, I believe it was a left hook or a right cross. And one of the two, I really can't think because I was moving too fast. A left hook or a right cross? That's right. All right, now. Did you think you were going to be able to do it in the first round? You did it in six rounds last well, time, Steve, Cassius. Well, did not tell the world that I had a surprise. Right, right. And that if uh, I... Did you think that Liston hit you with any kind of shot that, that maybe hurt you? Any whack toward the body? No, he hit at my body, but he hit my arms instead. He hit your arms instead. I'm you a little too fast, Steve, to be hit. By you you, was you like seemed Lester. very confident at the beginning. Why were you that confident coming out? I'm confident out? because Allah's with me. And his messenger, Elijah Muhammad. All right, now, you Muhammad, know, tell me, tell me this. What, did you really knock him out with the left hook and the right smash? Well, I would like to see the videotape if you have it. All right, do we have the videotape? Yes, we do. All right, we have the videotape, and let's try for viewers all over the world see what we had. Beautiful footwork. I was getting ready to come in there with a pretty right, but he was in the way. He was in the way. Yes, I must say this was an easy payday. My shape was so good. Uh, it really surprised me. I came in at two Now minutes. you're going to hit him. Watch closely. Watch closely. Is it a right-hand counter? You tell us what it is. I think it was a right-hand counter, not the left hook that you talked about a while ago. Well, didn't I tell you that Liston said in my poem, I want the world to know that I apologize. This kid is so fast, he Here. can't be touched, you know. Now watch this. That's watch closely. He's still the aggressor, at least moving towards you. This now. is scientific action, you feel. I'm a creative fighter, just throwing a... Taking my time and watching him knock him out. The man is a little afraid. All of this talk about somebody coming in the arena with bombs and machine guns scared him to death. It didn't scare me, but it scared him. Well, now, uh, Bodini, there it is. That was the right hand counter. Let's watch it. Let's watch it. A right hand counter, as I saw it. Steve, you have never saw the real Muhammad Ali. I haven't had time to warm up yet. You haven't? I haven't had time to. Just sit down let's let's look at it again. Now, that right hand was good. He aims toward the belly. He hit you under the heart there. Yeah, I didn't feel it. You didn't? No, let's watch it. I thank Allah for his messenger, Elijah Muhammad, right. for giving me the confidence to conquer all of this fear right, they now, tried to put in me here now, tonight. Muhammad, I don't want to overlook it. Describe this to us. Here he's coming towards you. He's moving. Three or four minutes later. Why are you standing over? I'm Muhammad? trying to tell the bum to get up and fight. Stephen why are you doing money. that? Tell me why. That was ABC's exclusive slow motion videotape coverage of the fight. We'll be back with the knockout in slow motion and again from a different camera angle in just a minute. Now once again, here is the knockout in slow motion. Trust 
course, that time you saw the blow cleanly. Now observe closely the extraordinary sequence of events that follows. First, the refusal of the champion to go to a neutral corner. Apparently departs. Second, the attempt of Liston to arise. Apparently he is unable to do so. Third, note the champion prancing about the ring. He has still not gone to a neutral corner. actually resumes. Fifth, as it does, the referee departs to answer a call from the official Seventh, Jersey Joe Walcott returns. He has been advised that Liston has been down for 10 seconds and more and declares Muhammad Ali the winner. And now at regular speed, here is the other camera angle we mentioned earlier. Play will be on your left as he renders the knockout blow. saw it once again. Now before we go to Robert Regal, let's listen to some post-fight comments by Liston and Muhammad Ali. What happened when well, you tried to get up? Do you think the fight was stopped before it should have been? Well, uh, only thing, I was trying to pick up the count. He was trying to pick up the count. Did you hear the count? Did you know what? No, I didn't. You didn't hear the count. He didn't hear the count, didn't know what it was. It was a punch, fair punch. He said it was a fair punch. Sonny, did the punch surprise you? Clay says, yes, Clay says it was a new tactic, the counter right. It was a surprising punch. Uh, if you had picked up the count, would you have been able to continue? Yes, I would. If he picked up the count, he would be able to continue. Myself, I think so. He couldn't pick up any count at all. Yes. Well, I would say the number one contender, uh, Terrell, either one, yeah. Uh, Chavalo, either, but it don't make no difference. I'm in a position now where I can't squawk. Who's not? I might have to fight you. In a position now where he can't squawk, you'd have to fight anybody. You seem to be in good humor. You hear it, Lester. Yeah. Ain't no use, ain't no sense of being in bad humor. Sonny, do you feel the disappointment at all? What actually are you Yes, feeling? I do feel real disappointed. I think it was because of um, my main point was to get it, get him and get it over with. What was your plan? Were you going to try and get him early or, I, I or stay with him? That. Well, I was going to stay with him. He got hit hard. I hit him with a punch that Jack Johnson used called the anchor punch. Stephen Fetcher, the old great Hollywood movie star, as I told you, he's working with me, and we were in secret training on something called the anchor punch. And this is a punch that Jack Johnson took to the graveyard with him. Nobody knew it but step and fetch it, and it's a twist-like chopped right hand that is hard to see. And I told a few of you fellas when you were at Chicopee, Massachusetts at my training camp, if you can remember clearly, I was demonstrating the right. Do you remember? Why don't you show do you us how fellas? it went, Chad? Do you? Yeah. How does it go? It's a how snap it punch, and you can't punch it until the man is coming in at you. That's like a head-on collision. One car doing 50, hitting the back of another car going 50, doing the same way, it's not much shock. But you turn the car around and bring them together head-on, it's a shock. So the man... I had to time the man with my rhythm and bouncing where he was coming at me and where I was meeting him and just, that's all, Goodbye, a Jack. twist. And you can't see it, but if you were hit with it, all of you be out. Mohammed was he? In boxing, when the championship of the world is at stake, defeat without punishment always creates doubts in the minds of the fans. I guess that's because of the great fighters we've had down through the years, the great fights, and the great pictures of those fights. Like this one, 
the day Jack Dempsey gave a tremendous beating to Gibbons in Shelby, Montana in 1923. Or this one, when Rocky Marciano won his world championship in the 13th round with his tremendous right hand to Jersey Joe Walcott's chin. There was never any doubt about this punch or about Marciano causing the damage. Or in the two fights with Ezra Charles and the tremendous punishment Charles took and Marciano's battered face. It was all there for everyone to see. But in Lewiston, Maine, in the last heavyweight championship fight between Liston and Clay, there was a great deal of doubt. This is the first punch of the fight. Clay throwing a right hand over Liston's left jab. This is Clay's second right hand, the one many people thought was the best punch of the evening. It, it caught Liston on the chin, but he kept on fighting. And this sequence shows precisely what happened and how the punch in question was landed. Clay was circling to his left, as he always did in the first fight and in this fight. Then Sonny Liston threw a 17th jab. He was short with it. He missed on all 17 jabs of the fight. You'll notice Clay's hands. Both his gloves are below his belt. He's circling to his left, on his toe, and then suddenly he brings his right hand up over Liston's jab and connects on the side of Liston's head. He's pushing off his rear foot. His power is coming all through his body. He has every intention of landing the blow. Crumples, his gloves come together. And now if you look at Clay's feet, he's swinging to the right. He seems to be off balance, but the punch has landed. And then he follows through with a left hook, but of course it misses as Liston goes down. This is the punch which so many people did not see. Another question is, for a man like Liston, who had never been floored before, how can one punch like this put him down? Especially when thrown by Clay so early in the fight. There is one theory that's very interesting, and that's the karate idea. The idea that a fighter throwing a particular punch in a particular style, as Clay can do because he has this great balance, this great speed, which you need in karate, and the fact of the twisting uh, motion at the waist, which a karate fighter always has, and the way when you bring the glove up, you turn your fist over. The karate people call this focusing the punch. A hook is like this, a jab is like this, but a karate punch is like this. I don't say, or no one says, that Clay intentionally threw a karate punch, or that he planned this punch, but because of the nature of his style of fighting, it's perfect for throwing such a punch. And perhaps landing here on Liston's head and throwing it in his style, which is natural to him, it was very effective. This could have done it. However, with all the slow motion tape, with all the high speed film, there is one question to be answered and one question which photography will never show. And that's, what about the integrity of a fighter, his courage and his skill and his desire to win? No camera showed it that night in Miami when Liston stayed in his corner and no camera showed it in Lewiston. The immortals, Jack Dempsey and Rocky Marciano, will discuss this idea in a little while. But right now, the famous referee, Ruby Goldstein and Howard Cosell. Thank you, Bob. And Ruby Goldstein is, of course, the most famous third man in the ring in boxing history. Ruby, you're in the ring. Guy gets knocked down. What do you do? Immediately, I see that the man that's caused the knockdown gets to a neutral corner, and in about four seconds, I'm back uh, yelling to count into the man that's on the floor, which I pick up from the knockdown timekeeper. How do you usually, hear it from the knockdown timekeeper? Uh, it usually comes to the count of four. I hear it from the knockdown timekeeper in Madison Square, got in the ball clubs, or the angle where they hold the fights. Uh, there is a loudspeaker, and it's very easy to hear. But someplace I wound up where you couldn't hear it in some smaller clubs, and we just read the lips of the announcer. Lip reading. Right. All right. Have you ever in your lifetime left the fighters to themselves, one fighter on the floor? No, you don't standing? leave it, and I feel sorry for Joe Walcott. He's a fine man, very honorable man, interested in a lot of good work, but he had a tough man to handle, a man like Clay who kept roaming around mm -hmm. in the vicinity where Liston was, yelling well, to get up, and it was difficult. At the same time, we've got to be reportorial about this, Ruby. Let's have a look. We had a special camera following Walcott during that 
period of action there, or chaos, however you want to put it. And I'd like your comments about Jersey Joe as we run the film of the fight and see exactly what he does. Now, there's Liston down. Now we're going to be going to Jersey Joe. See him looking over there? What would you have well, been doing? Well, if you notice, he's got a little difficulty he, there with Clay yelling and making motions. But and he that. didn't even go to Clay. Uh, well, he probably did, don't know where the knockdown timekeeper is sitting, and he probably doesn't hear what he's saying, and he's going over to find out what's going on. It, it is wrong, but I feel sorry for a fine guy like Walcott. Mm -hmm. And not having heard the timekeeper, his key error was to run over there and then declare the fight over. Because you can't declare a fight over, can you, Ruby, if the uh, man is never going to a neutral corner who's not no, the other man? No, you don't have to count. You can tell the timekeeper to hold up the count. And that's why Dempsey had the long count in Chicago with Gene Tully. Mm -hmm. Dempsey refused to, didn't go to the corner, and the referee didn't start to count until he did. So henceforth, you had about four seconds more in the count there. And he could have done this here as well, but maybe it's the fact that uh, just a once a year these referee. fellows don't referee too often. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes once a year, twice a year, then three years goes by and they don't referee. And it, you can forget sometimes. Anybody can make a mistake. I've made you, them too. Yeah, but so few and far between. Thank you so much, Ruby. Thank you, Howard. Ruby Goldstein, of course, and we'll be back with the man who was involved in the long count, Jack Dempsey, Rocky Marciano, Jimmy Cannon, the great sports writer, Bill Hines, the editor of the Fireside Book of Boxing, in a moment, right after this message. This is Jack Dempsey, a legend in his time. And Bill Hines, boxing expert, editor of the Fireside Book of Boxing, author of the great boxing novel, The Professional. Jimmy Cannon, the distinguished syndicated columnist of the Hearst Press. The hard rock from Brockton, Rocky Marciano, who never tasted defeat. These then are our panelists. They have seen the very films that our viewers have seen, and I'd like to begin with you, Jimmy Cannon, because at the bout, you were directly situated to see Clay throw the punch. Was there a punch? Yes, there was a punch, Howard, but I didn't think it was hard enough to crush a grape. The ring lights were very hot. The only explanation I can give for the way uh, Liston fell was that perhaps he was uh, sunstruck by the lights. <laughs> it was a hoax in the sense, I don't think it was a fix in the sense that money was passed, but I don't think that Liston tried as hard as he should. He just took a punch and got out of there. That's the way it looked to me. After New enough to duck about five or six right and left hands. Now, I'm not jumping on the bandwagon after the fight. Mm -hmm. Before the fight, I refused to pick a winner because I didn't like the circumstances of it. People connected with it. The mere fact that uh, Liston owns 22.5% of the stock in the company that promoted it. They make an excuse that he doesn't really own it anymore, but it's in the name of William Crawford. I asked Sam Margulies, who's connected with the promotion and is, seems to be Liston's manager, although he denies it, whose name it was in. And he said, William Crawford. And I said, who is William Crawford? And he said, Liston's father-in-law. <laughs> Hi, Jimmy. I'm going to move from that to Rocky Marciano because, Rock, you and I were seated together right beneath Liston, virtually, where he fell. Weren't you under the impression that he slipped or tripped rather than fell? Yes, um, I did because Clay was in no position at the time to throw a solid punch. He was moving from side to side in those funny moves that he makes, and uh, it looked like he pulled back through a, a sort of a leading right hand without too much power, but from the films, evidently after he threw it halfway, he then put some power behind it and did get in about six inches mm -hmm. of now punching th power. Didn't you feel that Walcott thought Liston slipped or tripped? Yes, he acted that way because he... Um, just didn't start the count mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. 
Well, here's a good chance, gentlemen, for a break. We'll get to Bill Hines and uh, Jack Dempsey in just a minute. So let's take 60 seconds out for another kind of sport, shall we? All right, let's resume and let's talk to the Manassas Mauler, Jack Dempsey. Jack, you deliberately did not look at that fight until today when you've that seen correct. the films. That's right. What's your view of the films? Well, uh, there's uh, very little to see, except I saw the punch, and the list looked very slow, and there was so much confusion, you can't tell what was going on. You think it was a knockout blow? Well, I, I don't know how hard he was hit. Not being on the receiving end, you never know just how hard these punches do come over, but I did see the punch go over. Mm -hmm. Earlier, you were quoted as saying that uh, you didn't want to see the fight or even hear it because you expected that this kind of thing was going to happen. Well, I felt that something could happen, and I didn't want to, if you can't say something good, why say anything at all? I didn't <laughs> want to say nothing. All right, Bill Hines, you edited the very film that the viewers have seen today. You satisfied that there was a sufficiency of force in that punch to knock out Liston? I think the, the answer how it rests with Mr. Liston. If uh, he couldn't get up, I think he belongs in Rochester, Minnesota, where the Mayo Clinic is. <laughs> and if he wouldn't get up, I think he belongs in absentia. Which is where he'll likely be from yeah. here on in. I think so. Billy, the thing that puzzles me is the documented record shows that Liston had never before been felled. And Clay had never before been a one-punch knocker-outer. Now, in the wake of those facts, how could this have truly been a knockout punch? Well, I think you'd have to understand Liston's entire physical condition, and we're not sure of that. We're really not even sure how old he is. He says he's 31, and we say he's 31 plus. Mm -hmm. Certainly, he looked like an old man, and as the two pros here can tell you, when you get to a certain age, you just don't live under a punch the way you did when you were young. So I think that's a factor, too, Howard. Well, Rocky, when you were not so young, really, in your career, Archie Moore decked you with a short right that only traveled about six inches, didn't it? Yes, that um, was when I missed him with my own right hand and had the full force going. And actually, uh, the clever man just stepped back just about three inches and hit me with the best counter punch you ever saw. And coming in and he coming in, I just went straight forward. What do you think about when you go down? Well, you realize that you can be put down, and it's a frightening thing to know that you can be put down. The punch traveled just a short distance, and uh, you say to yourself, he can do it again. I better be a lot more careful, mm -hmm. or a lot more aggressive, either one. Was Clay's punch at all like Moore's? No, not really. I thought he just started it, more or less, to parry, and all of a sudden he saw the opening, and he threw some power at the last moment. I've noticed that on the film here. Uh, he didn't have his body behind it, or any real... Um, follow through. It was just a, a over the right arm and right on the chin. Mm -hmm. It could have hit him in a good spot and just confused him very much. Well, as our viewers can see, that punch continues to remain very much in dispute. Our guests have been Jimmy Cannon, Jack Dempsey, Rocky Marciano, and Bill Hines. Thank you, gentlemen. The mystery of the punch unanswered. That's the way it was that May 25th, 1965 in Lewiston, Maine in a high school hockey rink where they had a heavyweight championship fight. The big questions remain unanswered. Yes, there was a punch, but was it of sufficient force to knock out a man who had never been flawed before? What about the referee, Jersey Joe Walcott, and his total confusion? Incidentally, Jersey Joe was invited to appear on this show, but was unavailable. Had he counted, could Liston have been up in town? Did Liston really, for that matter, get a fair shot? And what about all of the other bizarre circumstances attending upon the fight? The way it got, for instance, to Liston. Well, some say this was the end of boxing. Congress may bring in a federal boxing Some states want to wipe out boxing. But this may, in fact, have been a new beginning because Floyd Patterson now in Sweden says he's been promised a fight in the fall. And right now, there's a man in the ring, George Chavallo, and there he is, who wants to fight the heavyweight champion. He's ready at that moment. He may get the next shot. Indeed, this may be a new beginning. That's the story of the big fight. Muhammad Ali against Everybody Sonny Liston. What about next week on Wide World of Sports? Well, next week, ABC's Wide World of Sports will be at the Commodore Hotel in New York City for the World Pocket Billiards Championship. Luther Wimpy Lasseter will be defending his title 
against Joe Baltzus. Lassiter and Baltzus meet in the finals of this competition involving an outstanding field of America's pocket billiards players. Also next week, we'll present an outstanding topical event of international significance. So be sure to check your local listings for ABC's Wide World of Sports next week. The executive producer of ABC's Wide World of Sports is Rune Knowledge. The Clay Liston segment was produced for ABC by Jim Spence and Jim Colligan and directed by Marshall Diskin, Bob Delaney, and John Sedwick. Parachuting coverage produced by Jack Lubell and directed by William Bennington. Today's remote pickups were by ABC New York and Hollywood. Nationwide and worldwide travel arrangements for ABC's Wide World of Sports made through in promotional consideration furnished by TWA Transworld Airlines. Remember to check your local listings for ABC's Wide World of Sports next week. Now this is Howard Cosell saying so long. The preceding program was pre-recorded.